Namaskar. Good evening, friends, and welcome to tonight's webinar. We have a very interesting topic tonight. Your attitude is reflected in your voice and manner. Let's just take a moment to center ourselves. Let's close, close our eyes and ask that the presence of God and the Great Ones be with us tonight. Feel your heart and mind opening to their grace, their teachings, and most of all, to their love. Om Shanti. Shanti. Welcome again. So tonight we'll be talking about how every part of your being really is an expression of who and what you are, of what you think, of your attitudes, uh, your eyes, your posture, your voice, uh, your smile, or if you're not smiling, um, the hand gestures, everything shows what you're really thinking inside. And uh, it's a fascinating topic. Uh, I'll cover what I can in a half an hour. Um, but mainly, it has to do with the flows of energy. And if we're happy, um, our energy is flowing upward. We feel, we use the words, I feel up, I feel uplifted. Um, and we feel that um, in, in our expressions, and there's a smile on our face, maybe our hands go up, uh, maybe we look up, um, but we feel the energy moving. And because of the energy moving upward, we smile and all the gestures, so upward gestures happen. And uh, I, you know, you can think of a child and a child who is um, maybe wanting an ice cream cone. And if first you maybe, maybe you say, well, let's go to the ice cream place and maybe you get there. So on the way, the child is very happy and joyful and he's looking forward to the ice cream. And then you get there, but the place is closed. Now what happens? The energy goes down, and the child is, is unhappy, and the, and the energy just flows downward, and they may start to cry, and they may pout. And Now what just happened? They were just happy. The energy was moving up. But it's like a switch, a dial. And they turned that dial down, and the energy started flowing down. Thus the tears were flowing, the expression of the body was downward. Now that for a child is one thing, but adults have started, I don't know if they started, but adults do that as well. Something goes good and they're happy, something goes bad and they're, they're not so happy about it. Uh, I remember another very uh, telling story about my little nephew. And uh, I was just in America, as many of you know, visiting my family there. And uh, he was two months old. And so I, um, my sister, my, my sister-in-law and brother left him with us. And, uh, you know, at a certain point, he started crying. So they said, you put him in his chair and give him these things and he'll be fine. Of course, he wasn't fine. He just kept crying, kept crying, kept crying. Now, two months old, as soon as I picked him up, the crying stopped, the smile went on his face, and he was happy. And, you know, so even in someone who's two months old, these things, the expressions, the attitudes, they're there already. We say we learn them. We learn some, but a lot of them are there already. Um, I remember having a time when, uh, speaking of just um, how attitudes affect you, when uh, it was a difficult moment for me. And I just remember just such a heaviness that honestly I couldn't even lift my head well that I could just feel this heavy, like a heavy weight on my head. And it was hard to lift the head up. And sometimes that happens because the energy is pulling down, down, down. And what yoga teaches us is to keep our energy flowing upward. Uh, when we're uplifted, um, when our thoughts are uplifted, our energy is uplifted, our energy is uplifted, our thoughts are uplifted. Our eyes may sparkle, they may show, they may move, uh, you may look upward, the hands, as I'm using here. If I were here going, and this, and this, and that, it wouldn't seem right, but 
it, I feel uplifted. And so the hands are uplifted, my posture is good. Um, and all of these things show proper flows of energy. <clears throat> I was thinking of, uh, probably some of you have seen, at least on the internet, some of the Olympics. And um, I was looking at some of the things that, I mean, it's fantastic this year, it's particularly the women's gym gymnastics, uh, gymnast team, gymnastics team. And I was watching Simone Biles, and fabulous. I mean, she's considered the best gymnast probably um, ever up to this point. And you just look at how high she can jump and flip. It's really remarkable. But the thought that came in my mind was this. She also had mental training. It wasn't just physical training. To be able to do what she did, she had a lot of mental training. And she's very positive, a very happy girl. Um, you know, she said she was having fun doing what she was doing. It wasn't like a chore or a burden. Um, so it was wonderful to see that. Um, and also I was watching um, uh, Usain Bolt. And you know, many people think he's just joking around a lot, but the guy, I mean, he's the fastest person on earth. He's a dynamo. But before the race and after the race, he's very relaxed, he's just happy, he's just, you know, he's got a very sweet look on his face, and there's no, you know, grimness, I've just got to do it. And, and he looked at the other runners, and there, there was a lot of grimness. But he just seems like he's just very happy in himself. And that attitude helps the body to remain open, or flooded with energy, or uplifted, or whatever. And we see when, when these people, the Olympians, when they win, first thing happens, the hands go up. You know, they're up like this because the energy is rising up and the smile comes on the face. And so this is something that happens very, very, very naturally. And, but in yoga, we affect the change. We try to make that change happen. <clears throat> I'll get to that more in just a moment. Um, when our body our energy is uplifted. What's interesting is that the body, at least it seems, it even feels inwardly lighter. Now you can imagine a day when uh, you were feeling well, you were ill, and your, your energy was down, you could barely even get out of the bed. Now why? Because of the improper energy flows or the blockages of the energy. Um, in, in our spine, and I want to talk more about that in a moment. Uh, but when I was just in Chennai, we were doing some experiments there at uh, one of the classes, and we were tensing one of our arms, and I don't ask you to do it with me if you want, but we were tensing, vibrating the muscles, and then we relaxed, and then we put both arms out. And the arm that was tensed and relaxed was more, it feels lighter you might find that yourself. And then we did the other arm, and there were over 120 people there, and everybody without fail said that they felt the lightness. Now why does that happen? Because the energy is flowing properly. So the arms are more free. When you do your tense and relax your whole body, your whole body becomes more free. And this may even be, now I don't, I can't claim for, that I know this, but it may be why the body at a certain point for yogis starts to just um, levitate, move upward, because it's free of the heaviness of the blocks that hold it down. And so uh, with the energization exercises, the body becomes more light and more free. Uh, of course, it's energized more. With Hatha Yoga, Ananda Yoga, we use uh, affirmations with the postures, and uh, your posture actually changes when you do the yoga postures. I've seen people go into the yoga teacher training and after they come out, they just have a very good posture. Their spine is straight, their shoulders are back. They, uh, they've changed over those months and because of yoga. So with energization, your body becomes more free and light. With yoga, you become more centered in yourself. Uh, with the Raja Yoga classes that we have, um, I've seen after two or three months of practice, the person, of course, they're, they're physique changes, um, you may even, you know, lose some weight or whatever, but what I've noticed more than anything is that the faces change. Uh, the faces become more, uh, less strained, 
and less heavy and less uh, worrisome. There's less wrinkles on the, the brow and you know tension and all. The faces become just more more light and more open and more soft and more sweet. And that comes because there's a proper flow of the energy. And um, it's interesting with those who are Kriya yogis, I can tell who's, who's practicing Kriya or not. If I don't even know the person, because there's a certain vibration. Also, there's a way the person carries himself uh, from doing energization, from doing Mahamudra, one of our practices, from uh, their thoughts, from doing pranayama every day. There's just a certain way you start to change. And Master said you won't be able to recognize yourself. And I mean inwardly, but also outwardly. There's just to, you become a different person. You look at your old pictures and you'll see what I mean. So for the yogi, a good posture is essential because the energy is flowing up and down in the nadis and the astral spine and the irda, pingala, and a certain point in moving into the deeper spine, the sushumna. And so it's like a hose, the spine, the astral spine. Now we're not talking about the physical spine, but we're talking about uh, a spine of energy and light, we can say, where prana is flowing. Now, you can imagine that's like a hose, and if it's kinked or it's curled, the, the energy is not going to be able to flow. So if you're watering your plants, you, you don't have a good, the hose isn't aligned, you turn on the water, nothing happens. Same with the spine. This is why we always say to keep your spine straight um, as a yogi. And if you look at pictures of Paramahansa Yoganandaji, he, his chest was out, his spine was straight. Same with Swamiji, he led with his, his chest. And his spine, I, I never saw his spine bent. And so first thing for in yoga is to always keep your spine erect. Um, and you'll feel much more a flow, not even a flow, a flood of energy coming through up through the lungs and up to the brain, up to the higher centers. The yogi should live from the higher centers upward, from the higher chakras. It doesn't mean that you deny the other chakras, but that the energy is flowing strongly, strongly in an upward direction. Um, now I've seen some things that, that block this flow. One is bad posture, but others are, um, there's interesting things. I've seen um, people with these ladies, especially with high heel shoes. Now, they might look nice, but the high heel shoes, especially the high ones, it completely throws off your posture. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate so you won't forget this so you can see this. I don't wear high heels, I haven't for decades. But you can see the knees are out, the spine is out, my neck is out, and people will walk like that for hours at a time, a wedding or whatever, but it completely throws your posture off and, and throws off the nervous system. So then you don't feel so good afterwards. So be careful with what you're wearing. Also, tight, a tight belt closes off, the blocks the, the diaphragmatic breath, the diaphragmatic breathing. And so, uh, and to breathe fully at any time, you need the use of the diaphragm. And so having a tight belt on, and, and particularly if you're a Kriya bond and you're doing Kriya, you just cannot do Kriya with that on. But um, be careful with that because it's blocking the flow of the energy. Also, um, tight, tight clothing. Now, it might be in style, but it just doesn't work for proper circulation in the body. And it seems like the clothes are getting tighter and tighter, like the person is just about to pop out of the <laughs> clothes. <laughs> and, and for what reason, I don't know. But anyway, your body needs to be able to move and the energy needs to be able to move up the spine. And so uh, fashion consciousness may be okay, but don't overdo it to the point of that you're just completely confined and you're not breathing properly. Uh, another thing is, I see the ladies with a heavy purse, and, and if on, it's on the shoulder, then you know, then you're down like this, and look what's happening to my spine. It's completely uh, compressing the nerves on one side, and you might think for a while it's okay, but after a while it's not okay, and you end up um, 
with difficulties on that side or your neck goes out or whatever. These are everyday practical things, but they happen. They're happening every day. That's why I'm mentioning them to you because they do affect you. And, uh, you know, there's one other one, the backpack. Now, the backpack is a great invention, but I honestly, I see these little kids in the morning with, why do they have so many books? I mean, the pack is just loaded with books, and so they put, they put the pack on, and they go, kind of like this, they can't even manage it. And so uh, this is throwing off the posture as well. These are all things that happen every day. We see them, we just say, okay, but it's not okay. And after a while, as you get older, then uh, you, your body has maintained those habitual uh, things that the, the knees are locked or the lower back is out or the neck is out or whatever. And so they weigh you down and they block the flow of the energy. So uh, bad postures, other things that I can say are, um, you know when a person is down, you look at them and there's a, there's a, the posture shows that they're not receptive. Now here's one of the main ones that you people do is this. You know, they're completely closed off. <laughs> this means that their heart is not open at all. So you get this one. And then you get this, the hands on the hips. All of these are signs. They're you know, all giving different messages. You know, this is don't don't tell me what to do. And um, then the head the head down and looking down is definitely and slump position is a terrible position for a yogi. Um, and you see people in front of the TV with the um, the the thing that changes the channels. The, and they're just slumped down in the chair. This is just not good for you. So always try, you know, when we were growing up, and I know your, your parents said this to you too, but my mother, more, mainly my mother, was always sit up, sit up, sit up, sit up. And I just thought, why? Why do I have to sit up? <laughs> now I know why you have to sit up. But we probably tell our children now to sit up, sit up, sit up. But if you, if you sit properly, with the shoulders are a little bit back, and I'll demonstrate this, if you can, if you tend to slump, which typically people do because of all the reasons I just gave with the posture and the clothing and the backpack and everything, you can bring the hands together, just pull back, pull your shoulder blades together, and then release. Now look at my shoulders or back. And particularly if you're trying to meditate, if you start here, you're going to end here. Now I've compressed my lungs, so I can't breathe. I've compressed plus the diaphragm, so I can't breathe. And the spine is bent. So you don't stand a chance. You're going right to sleep. And so uh, uh, these are things um, to remember. And also another one, I love Swamiji gave this one, which is very true. He talked about pride and how people who are proud there's, there's tension at the medulla so that their head, their, their head is pulled back and they're, it's like they're looking down their nose at you. So they're just you know, kind of like this. And uh, that's from a great de deal of tension there at the medulla. The seat of the ego is in the back of the head. And so we want to be free. This is why we have fantastic exercises every day of energization all the different ones, the neck recharging, the throat recharging, and the back and the spine, and all of them just help to, uh, the more I practice them, the more I'm grateful for them because they really help to keep your body in alignment and the energy flowing, and more energy flowing properly in the body. Now I'd like to talk about the voice. The voice as you meditate and as you chant, um, it becomes typically sweeter. Uh, it, of course, depends on the person. I mean, your attitudes, you can't just chant and meditate and then, you know, go around with bad attitudes. The attitudes have to be proper uh, and balanced with the meditation, but typically, the voice sweetens. And um, it, Master had a strong voice, so you can't say he had a a sweet voice. I mean, at times he did, but other times he, before he would get after you, and that was a that was the strongest voice I ever heard in my life. The Swamiji's voice was very. I think it was the most well placed voice I I experienced in my 
my lifetime, that it was just very well placed. He was speaking from the chakras. So he would speak from the higher centers, and he wouldn't say, I'm speaking from the chakras, but you could always feel like he's coming from somewhere else. He was in complete control, and he could speak and sing that way because I believe his spine was open and there was energy flowing, uh, the chakras open, and uh, it was a very, very melodious voice when he sang, but also when he spoke. And I think he, he was trying to give us an example that you don't use your voice just to talk, you use it as a blessing. You use the voice uh, to, to send good vibrations out, to heal people, to uh, put energy out. And um, anyway, you'll find that uh, certain people have a very, a voice that you just, you enjoy listen, listening to them, if they're singing or they're speaking or whatever. Uh, other people may have a harsh kind of a voice. I was just out walking before this, and I was hearing some people talking, and the, you know, the man was like, <laughs> you know, and it's just so, it's just, you don't enjoy it. And the voice doesn't need to be like that. If for Especially for someone who practices yoga, the voice is, it's all coming from up here, the heart and the throat chakra and the spiritual eye. And um, try to speak that way. Don't make your voice uh, just haphazard. And uh, you'll find that some people have a very happy, they have a joyful voice. And it's, it's, a, it's a joy to hear them sing or, or chant or, or talk. And then for the face, I want to talk a little bit about the face. That you know, the face is, it's interesting. The shape of the face, the shape of the head. Honestly, I can't talk much about this because I don't know much about it. But you can tell a spiritual person's face is like an open face. It's very different than, you know, shut down. It's just, there's like a flower that has opened up. And it opens more and more. And the face is with the eyes and the smile and um, the unfurled brow. Um, it's just a, there's an open to life look. And that face was produced in other lifetimes, not just this one, um, that we carry over the vibration of the kind of face that you know we had before. And, and, um, and what's very interesting is this, is that at the end of, I think, one's uh, incarnations at the time of near freedom, I think you become, um, I don't think it's in the teachings, you become balanced between male and female. So your, your face becomes, if you're masculine, your face becomes sweeter. And maybe if you're feminine, your face becomes more balanced in the other way. Um, if you look at the picture, and I'm going to show you a couple of pictures in a moment, but if you look at Master's face, I don't know if it happened to you, but many times people asked me when I had his picture in the car or somewhere, oh, is that uh, your relative? Is that your grandmother or, you know, some womanly figure? And uh, very rarely did anyone ask me, was that a man? It was always a woman. And you could see a master, not just because of his hair, but he was ba completely balanced between feminine and masculine energies. And uh, remember there was a very sweet story of, uh, he was on the train once and, and uh, one uh, conductor, or uh, man taking the tickets, he was walking up and down the aisle. And, you know, I, I think he had never seen an, an Indian before, a master had long hair. And, and so he just kept looking and then you know, he finally looked at him and he said, is you a man or is you a woman? <laughs> he was a, a black waiter. And uh, Master said, what do you think? <laughs> so sweet. But he just had that. He also had the bob. It wasn't just his face. It was just he was, he was a bhakta. So there was so much love pouring out of him. And he was like a mother to the disciples, and is like a mother to the disciples. So that, that sweetness was there. And one time at a conference, he was, uh, he was looking for the, the washroom. So he went in 
And uh, someone told him, oh, over there. So he goes in, and ladies everywhere. <laughs> ladies in the front, ladies in the front, ladies everywhere. So he said, this isn't where I want to go. So he goes in the other room, and all the men said, lady, not in here. <laughs> and he says, I know what I am. And But he just was right between the two. And I think it's just a wonderful affirmation or something that we aim towards is uh, not to be, uh, you know, I'm a man, and, and the ladies, no, oh, I'm a woman, and, and it just should be, just be natural. And I know a, a lot of the, um, the ladies at Ananda are quite strong. <laughs> and a lot of the men are very sweet, you know, just like the, the balance is coming uh, to both sides there. And finally, I wanted to talk about the eyes. <clears throat> And most people's eyes, when you look at them, I mean, you can't, in fact, Master said, don't look deeply into people's eyes. I mean, devotees are different, but if you look out on the street, what do you see in people's eyes? Pain, maybe bitterness, suffering, ego, uh, desires, <clears throat> central energy, money, money, money. You know, you just, just look. It's just uh, just showing where the person is at. And, uh, and you look in a devotee's eyes, what do you see? There's peacefulness, or there's sweetness, or there's joy, or there's uh, joyful expectation, or there's love for God. Very different vibration. Um, and um, you, can, you can just read that in a person's eyes. And I wanted to read you something from Raja Yoga about the eyes, too. And then I have a couple of pictures to show you. But <clears throat> Swamiji says this about the eyes. It's very interesting. It says, a major vehicle for the brain's energy is the eyes. Look into the eyes of anyone possessing a strong, vibrant personality and feel the intensity of this energy flow, meaning energy is flowing out of the eyes. Observe how people's eyes can seem almost to blaze with anger, to freeze in contempt, to sparkle with laughter, and to melt with kindness and love. Then he goes on to say, restless and constantly blinking eyes, for example, indicate a restless mind. Quiet, unblinking eyes, a calm mind. Staring eyes, a blank mind, or sometimes veiled. Eyes that look as if pressed inward from the sides suggest mental worry. You might get a mirror at some point soon and look at your eyes. Eyes relaxed at the sides, inner peace. Eyes drawn slightly outward at the sides. Devotion and a sense of oneness with the beloved. Shifty eyes indicate untruthfulness. And finally, the right eye represents a person's rational nature. The left eye is emotional and feeling nature. When reason is uppermost in his consciousness, he tends to think and to express his awareness more through the right eye. When feeling is uppermost, he thinks and expresses himself more through the left eye. Remember the eyes are the windows of your soul. Used rightly, they can be made instruments of great blessing and inspiration to others. Just as important, they can help you to affirm and deepen those states of consciousness which you want to develop. <clears throat> and let's close by looking at, I want to show you a couple of pictures. This is a picture of Ananda Moy Ma. And of course, Master met her. You uh, saw, read about her in Autobiography of a Yogi. I hope you're seeing this okay. Look how beautiful the eyes are and the face is so soft. And you can feel a blessing coming from the picture. This is one reason why we have pictures of holy people around and put them on our altars. <clears throat> and look at Uruji. Just look how he looks between the two, masculine and feminine. 
and look at his eyes. Just very um, deep, very much drawing you, your energy upward to God. And finally, he put this picture on his book for that reason for people to feel the vibrations of love of God flowing through his whole face and especially through his eyes, drawing them upward and into, into the light. Let's close now with just a moment of silence. Feel the blessings of seeing these holy pictures, their vibrations uplifting you. And bringing you into the light. Om Shanti. Shanti. God bless you.